Hi, friends. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Samanda, medical intuitive healer and life coach. And you're listening, listening to Stepping Into Soul Power, the podcast where people understand that we are more than just our physical bodies. You know, here we explore topics like medical intuition, healing, help you identify your blocks and give you the strategies to empower the soul in you friends friends so we we you know we've we've got a great guest today um Desiree Demars coach creativity coach shaman hypnotist sacred artist um a woman that is passionate about helping others seek clarity in in their own transformation has a very heart centered approach um well versed as a as a healer teacher program facilitator um is is here and and um would love to to welcome her to the show Thanks, Elizabeth. Good to be here. Yes, yes. Um, so we um, very you you do a lot of different things, a lot of different things, and um, and and I can just feel that creative spirit within, within you. And you actually help others um, as a as a creativity coach. And and can you tell us about your your path, um, like how you went about? getting into that specific um that that specific area okay yeah um i think you know all my life i'd been an artist and then professionally i was a um a graphic designer for many years and did all kinds of things um, Mm. like sign painting advertising that kind of stuff logo design you know but of course that wasn't really my passion, you know, I, I, I loved being an artist too, which I would say primarily in my fine arts work, I focused initially on drawing and painting. And, um, and then I, I got into, I got, or I got introduced to art therapy. So I started understanding, you know, so there's so many more levels to art, so many more levels to creativity And I think I already kind of understood that because back in the 70s, I was very interested in, well, I lived off the grid back then before it was kind of cool to be green, you know, and I lived with a community of people who uh, were mostly artists. I mean, we all had our own homes, but we helped each other build our own homes. And so that's, you know, part of my creativity had always been on a very practical level, although, you know, Mm. it's there's, I don't know, you know, when you're creating and if you're an artist, there's, I don't know if there's any way you can miss the, you know, not be aware uh, of the fact that it's all about the process, you know, I mean, really creating Mm. where I think we're all creators. And I think sadly, that's what has happened in our culture now is that, um, you know, and this has been going on for a long time that people, I, I can't tell you how many people I run across say, well, I'm not creative. Mm-hmm. And yet they might do all kinds of things in their home or they might make things for their kids or for friends mm-hmm. or whatever. They might sew that, who knows, you know, they do, they, they do all kinds of amazing things, but they don't consider that creative because they believe that it's like, they're not making art and selling it <clears throat> as an mm-hmm. artist. And then they're comparing, you know, their creativity to, Another's, but the truth is, I think this is what's really evolving now too. Is um, you know, after all of that, and then after having doing um, even other jobs, where I had other businesses in college, I uh, did teak refinishing, and then eventually I worked on a yacht, and I had a sail making and a canvas a business with a, another couple. Wow. So you know, I, you know, at some point, I just had to kind of say, I, I'm just a creative soul. It doesn't matter what material mm. I'm using. You know, mm. there's something about being creative or just creating that is so healing or that is uh, just a natural expression for all of us. It's just natural. I think I think this is what most people don't realize. And I so well, I did get into wanting to, you know, coach people because that's 
what I would run up against, you know, even in my shamanic mm. work, um, people say, oh, you know, I just wish I was more creative. And so mm. what I did for many years, too, as a, um, a massage therapist and an energy worker, you know, working with plants, working with energy, I would sometimes just have the person before they get on the table, I'd have a little setup on my desk of um, paper, pens, paints, whatever, and they could just play and I'd say, you know, ask them to, I just ask them a question or ask them what was up, you know, yes. or give them some kind of starting point and then just see what they drew in a few minutes, like not even, you know, just give them a minute, it doesn't have to be long and just see what their first response mm. was. And then I would, it was always amazing, of course, what, um, what people would draw, how accurate it was in showing what was really going on internally for them. Oh, like, beautiful. Oh, I love Yeah. Example was, I remember, I'll never forget this one gal. Uh, she, I'd been seeing her for a while for different kinds of body work and energy work. And then she came in one day and was very frustrated. And I said, well, let's, you know, I suggested let's do a little, and it just could be a scribble. It really, and I think it, that's kind of what it was. I think I had markers out and she just kind of drew a sketch, but I asked her what she felt like it was. And she says, I think it's a volcano. That's how I feel. And then we laughed. Wow. You wouldn't believe how we laughed after because she, I can't remember now if she told me at the end or, or later at a, a later date is she found out she was pregnant. And so she just said, you know, I just feel like all this, something's inside me that's just like, you know, wanting to come forth. And I, I just laughed. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, so this is a great example of how, you know, our body knows, our inner wisdom knows what's going on for mm. us, both internally and externally. And I think this is how I'll say it kind of ties into the other work I do, which is the, shaman, the shamanism and my bone readings is that yes, you really, you know, creativity is really connected to the symbology in our life. And so mm. symbols are really key. You know, like you don't have to necessarily read the bones like I do, which is very specific. Mm. But, mm. you know, the more it's, it's another tool, really. I think of it and people that are interested in it, I'd find already might be looking at symbols in their life. You know, those things are uh, showing themselves, expressing themselves all around us all the time. It's yes. just, you know, what it, it's kind of like what I think of um, naturally. If you think of naturally, we all do this is let's say you suddenly decide, okay, I need a new car and I think I want a red Jaguar. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, what happens everywhere you look? You see red, see. you're like, oh my gosh, look how many red jaguars there are out there. I thought that would be kind of unique or whatever your thought was. But, you know, your subconscious will tune into whatever it is you where you put your intention. So I'll say this too, as far as like a, an overarching, um, let's say, structure that I see in all the things that I do and how they're connected as I say, I truly believe they they operate like on the I say it uh, like spirit just gave me this analogy the I am principle which is your intention whatever that is and your intention could be obviously mm -hmm. just thoughts that you say gosh I, I need a new car I want X Y Z um, your mm -hmm. attention where you put your attention yeah. because we know even scientifically that like where you put your attention, you know, we know in quantum physics, like wherever your attention goes, energy flows, right? Yeah. So, you know, so it's important that your intention then lines up with your attention. What are you putting your attention on? And then of course there's more details on that. Like the more you actually feel it, the more activated it is, you know, rather than it just being in your head. And then, um, M in the I am. So that's I, A for attention. Mm -hmm. And then M is all about movement. And I think this is where quantum physics is coming into now the whole idea of even understanding that, you know, our genes are really, yes, we come in with certain genes from our parents, but the truth is yes. the genetics we know it's more about the day to day is more about like our environment and what we 
surround ourselves with because that's influencing exactly us. and so the m is really about movement and that is everything is always moving that is the one thing we know what's the old saying like the only thing that's um constant is change mm -hmm. right and so uh in fact if you look astrologically or ast astronomically at that idea uh, they call it a holo movement now. And now with science, we can see this. We're like, you know, when I was a kid, you know, it was like, oh, here's the sun and everything goes around the sun. And our only illustration was that it went around in a circle yes. and now, you know, with quantum physics and, you know, much better science and technology that no, it's a spiral and everything is spiraling. And in fact, we're spiraling through space going like a million miles an hour. And we don't feel that because everything is moving, but we're a part of this cosmic energy that's moving. So I think that's a big part of creativity and healing, um, you know, whether it's shamanic, whether even if it's hypnosis, when people are being regressed and uh, looking back at their past. Now, of course, they might not, you know, intellectually on the surface say, oh, I remember all my past lives. You know, some people mm -hmm. might remember things, bits and pieces. Some little kids still do. But once you can, you, somebody, can yeah. Oh no, can you break that down to for some of our listeners who may not um, necessarily? I, I think there there are a lot of um, misconceptions about hypnosis and then past regression who may not know like what that is. Like what you know? Oh like sure, yeah. I'm happy to because I I love doing hypnosis work. I mean, it always is, it feels like such an honor, and then it always blows me away to see you know like just to observe how in a hypnosis session. This is truly how I feel, even about shamanic work. I say, you know, we are our own medicine, or that's how I try to support people. Yes. Like, you're your own medicine, just meaning that everything you actually need and want is inside of you. And then how you express it or how you that shows up in your life comes from that, not from the external in necessarily. You know, yes, we have influences, we have planetary. But when we're talking about hypnosis, it's really so simple. I feel like um, basically it's assisting someone to go into a really deep state of relaxation so mm -hmm. that they're no longer in that thinking mind, right? They're no longer trying to be in left brain logistic. They're not trying to figure anything out. They have an intention or a question. In fact, I usually ask people to give me anywhere from 10 to 20 questions that they have about their life or whatever is going on at the time that's really important for them. And so then I'm able to weave that into the process as, as the person is in a, in a hypnotic state. So it's really about being in a deeply relaxed state of, a, but you're still awake. Obviously you're still aware. Yes. So it's like being in a dream state, but not being asleep so to speak. And mm. so I also love hypnosis because it encourages people to utilize their creativity in a way too, is their imagination. And imagination, mm. I know sometimes gets a really bad rap, you know, like even when we're kids, we're told often like, oh, stop, you know, you're just imagining that there's no boogeyman or there's no, you're not talking to that mm. flower or whatever the child might say. But that's mm -hmm. could be further from the truth. You know, it's just that they're in a different frequency state of mind when they're tuning into that. And some of this, some of the hypnosis work I find really works best when someone is feels free enough to or safe enough to use their imagination for at least a springboard. You know, at least just say, well, you know, let's just imagine what if you were you know, someone say, I see a flower. You know, okay, maybe, can you talk to the flower? Can you, you know, just use your imagination to be more mm. playful, right? And more experimental yes. with your understanding of reality. Because the truth is, we, I think, and, you know, we're coming to see this through all the sciences now, is there's so much more to what we see in an inner, you know, in the inner planes. We, and, and, you know, what's really helping yes. too, I'm going through, um, People who are, there's so many more people now involved with or getting interested in mediumship 
or medical intuition. Mm -hmm. And those operate on that same level. You know, it's not about being in your logical thinking mind. It's about expanding and being that those higher frequencies of mind so that you are allowing yourself to tap into information that might come in through all different senses, right? It might just be a sense yes. of knowing. It might be you feel. I mean, I know when I do, uh, when mediumship information comes through for me, I often get it mm. through a smell. You know, so it's- like, Oh, that's, that's really wonderful. Like, I, I love that. I love that. Yes. And, you know, at the beginning, I used to think I would kind of doubt that or just go, oh, that's kind of weird. Why am I picking up that? Then I realized, mm -hmm. well, if I just say to the person, I don't, you know, because the truth is, I don't know what it means to them, mm -hmm. but this is what I'm getting. And it's coming through a sense of smell. And then I would say it and they would <laughs> laugh usually, or they would just go, oh my gosh, I was just like, for example, I think I said to a client once, I smell like an elephant. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. I said, I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm smelling mm -hmm. an elephant. Maybe I'm at a zoo or something. And then she laughed because she said, well, yeah, I just took my kids to the zoo and their uh, elephants are like one of their favorite animals. And then it wow. connected into something else for her. So mm. you know, then I started learning, oh, don't doubt any of that because yes. it can trigger something really important for the person that in my, even in me being in my logical mind, I, it kind of, that stops the energy too. I can't be mm. as expanded if I'm going to sit there and doubt the way information's flowing to me. So, yes. you know, I began to trust it so much more because it, and then my hearing is really sensitive. I'm super sensitive hearing. So I would sometimes just hear other voices or hear a sound or something, or I would get a whole phrase. I'll never forget that either. I think I was doing a creativity <laughs> coaching session with somebody. And then I was thinking, oh, this is, I don't know if I could say this to her. This is so weird, but I got really clearly mm -hmm. like um, a whole phrase and I, then Whatever she said, I thought, oh, I've just got to say it to her. And the phrase was, um, stop thinking so much like a dog and act more like a cat. And she just was like, oh, my gosh. She's like, oh, my gosh, I have this dog. And she said she felt like she really always was catering to the dog. And then she said, you know, I feel like that sometimes myself. Like, I kind of act like my dog. And if I don't get attention or, you know, she described her feelings about her dog yes. and how she interacts with the dog and said, yes. you know, sometimes I feel like that. And I really don't want to be like that. I would love to be more like a cat. Cause I think, I think she had a cat too. And she said, you know, the cats are more like totally into themselves, really yes. into themselves first. Right. And then the funny thing is we did a little shamanic work with that. And um, I asked her to journey to get a power animal that would support mm. her in being more like a cat, whatever that meant to her. And sure mm. enough, I believe it was a tiger. It was incredible. So she had this incredible power animal that was a huge cat, you know, so I, <laughs> after that session too, you know, it's important for the practitioner as well as the client not to. You know, like who I know, I know a medium who says, don't poo poo the woo woo. Like if something sounds really spooky, <laughs> it's okay. You know, like just put it out there. It's just words. It's just a thought. It's just information actually is what it is. And so yes. if that person yes. can realize that, oh, wow, go with it. If they can't, that's fine. You know, because then sometimes, and I'm sure you know that we don't always understand fully what we're receiving in the moment. We're just getting all yes. this data. And it's okay because later you might get it or later you might get another breadcrumb. And then you say, oh my gosh, now I understand when Desiree said this, that it's related to that. So, you know, it's all connected. So it's just about trusting. So that's what I love about, um, you know, working with somebody with, um, uh, you know, regression and regression just means, you know, being in a hip no hypnotic state, a deep state of relaxation and allowing yourself to tap into memories from the past mm. so that, you know, you can go as far back as you like, um, you know, yes. and the approach is very spiritual. I use um, beyond quantum healing technique, 
which uh, Dolores Cannon was the originator of that particular technique. And so the focus with that is much more spiritual. I mean, I, I, I will definitely assist somebody if they said, oh, you know, I want to quit smoking or I want to lose weight because we can, we can track yes. that too and see how that's connected to behaviors. But with the quantum healing uh, technique, it's, you know, we're also open to, it might be past life information that comes through because that might mm. be where that core pattern comes from. So it reminds me a lot of journeying, right? Because if we're journeying and especially if we're doing ancestral healing, um, yes. we're connecting to ancestors often, right? Or we're connecting even ourselves Absolutely. to past life. Mm -hmm. And and so for, for you, when you're in session for when you're in session with, with people, do you, do you mix and match? Do you focus on one thing or like, how do you? Yeah. Um, Cause you have so many different talents. <laughs> so there's so much knowledge there and it's like, okay, well, how, how do, how do you? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. First of all, my first premise would be like, I trust the client. Like if somebody came to me and said, gee, I don't, I've never done hypnosis before, but I think I'm ready to, or I think I want to, mm -hmm. then I would start there. And what I find is usually in something like in doing hypnosis, especially, you know, my approach, if it's kind of a broader spectrum rather than like for one behavior or one pattern, mm -hmm. um, it lends itself to integrating other practices. So then I feel like my bag of tricks, so to speak, or my tools, my bag of tools, mm -hmm. um, could be anything because the truth is once you're into remembering, let's say past life information, if that's coming up and you start to remember things about yourself, often uh, what is appropriate is helping the person do a little journey or, you know, or maybe utilize their own creativity so I can coach them in the session. And so I might use, you know, several tools, or like I said before, when I was working with somebody in a creativity session, mm -hmm. and then it seemed really essential to, you know, do this power animal work. So I just was able to rattle a little and help her. We didn't have to go into, you know, I don't feel like it's so cut and dry for me. I feel like they mm -hmm. all work together. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say though, that, you know, I would honor what the person's, um, intuition is or what their desire is, you know, what their choice is, how they come in and how they start. And if that feels right, we go with it. Or, you know, I might make a suggestion or I definitely let them know if they say they're going, they're interested in um, uh, hypnosis that, you know, we may do some other practices or other techniques within the hypnosis session. And, it, and it's pretty seamless. It's not like that you have to stop and say, oh, now we're going to do, you know, something else. It really, it's really natural. It's really easy and free flowing. I don't think I've never had anybody feel like that stopped, you know, that created some kind of block or something for them or their inability to, to, um, to integrate that into the experience they're having. <clears throat> whether it's journeying because you know it's true that even in a journey even doing um shamanic journeying work for let's say ancestral healing um you're mm -hmm. having to use your imagination you're having to go into a deep state of relaxation you know the basic elements mm -hmm. are very similar so um i can I, I find it's really easy for me to weave those together and however somebody wants to get into that place it's really up to them mm -hmm. you know because that's where the safety obviously lies if someone says gee i came to you for shamanic work then that's kind of the entry point right then we might start there mm -hmm. and and then i just trust that that's the place they feel comfortable so i would support them with that and then if i had suggestions as we go into the session or maybe at the end say oh maybe we would do a follow-up and that use a different technique and just suggest yeah. that because i think they're all really valid and they all can um integrate pretty seamlessly with one another oh it's beautiful and then are are there any um any resources that you have loved um mm. for as far as your your career as a, as a sacred artist, as a creativity coach, hip, 
as a hypnotist, like any things that have really spoken to you that you'd recommend for the audience? Yeah, oh boy, so many things. I mean, I think, I mean, I truly love, I think what I would say is um, notice or pay attention to your own nature, right? Like if, if mm -hmm. what you're drawn to is, you know, being out in nature, earthy types of things and that, I mean, shamanism can be an incredible tool, right? Because it's very earth-based um, yes. type, of, type of therapy. If you're more, um, if you find yourself being, well, you know, you're more intellectual and you really do like kind of analyzing things or understanding things on a mental level, um, hypnosis might be something that really opens some doors for you. Um, and I, that, so that's kind of how I've come into those. I, I don't know that I could even say there's one thing other than, um, you know, trust your gut and trust like what, trust what brings you joy, trust what, you know, uh, makes your heart sing. So if it's like, if you like drawing, but you don't feel you're creative, you know, take a drawing class or, you know, or join a group mm -hmm. or something, you know, just allow yourself to play. I think I find when I just allow myself to be more playful with what, a, however I'm wanting to approach an issue or a problem that I have or something that I want to enhance in my life, I find, mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's like, I, I would say one of the most basic resources that I ever had because it, it taps into something totally, um, what would I call it, kind of neutral, um, <clears throat> oh, what was it, um, it was uh, The Artist Way, the book The Artist Way, and again, you don't have to be an artist, you don't have to want to be an artist, the artist it's not even about necessarily yes. being an artist, but it's about just allowing your natural creativity to guide you. And so there's tons mm. of exercise. What is her name? Cameron, I think is her last name. Um, it's a classic. I mean, it was written many, many years ago and she actually is a writer. And so it was something she came up with for her own writing support, her own daily support in writing. And I think you can't go wrong. Her, one of her most basic exercise, and she, Julia Cameron, she is known for, um, she called it, I think back in the book, it was called the brain drain. Because again, oh, yeah. if you're stuck in your mind, you're not, you're just kind of going to go in a little hamster wheel, right? So yes. her practice was just journal, but it's not journaling to say, oh, I went to the store and then I saw this and I did that. It's in fact, she says, uh, she suggests that you write, like I say, you had a journal, a good size piece of paper, mm -hmm. three pages. Mm -hmm. You wake up, that's the first thing you do. And you don't think of anything like what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm doing my artist journal or it's nothing like that. You just get on the page and you just start writing. Even if it's like, I don't know what to write. I don't like doing this. This is not fun. I'm not enjoying mm -hmm. this. And just yes. keep going, keep going. And the next thing you know, like a page in, maybe even sooner, sometimes you just suddenly start, boom, something shifts, right? And then information yes. comes to you or you can scribble whatever you want. But I, I know I have been in several of those. It's great to do with a group. Because mm -hmm. I think it's like, let's say 12 weeks, I think her suggested program is, you know, she gives different exercises. It's great to do it with a group because, mm -hmm. you know, you've got support, you know, to get feedback and share your process with people. And then you don't feel like, oh my God, I am writing my, what, what I'm writing. You don't start criticizing so much. Yes. You know, you stop being critical because that's what really squashes all of us, right? That inner critic that we all have, we all have it on some level. We either got it from school, some kind of conditioning, you know, I mean, the classic mm -hmm. is like trees aren't purple, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when kids mm -hmm. point, what's wrong with that? No, that, you know, they'd criticize what you drew. Um, you know, or we had parents that had specific ideas often for like, oh no, she's going to be a lawyer. So God forbid exactly. you want them to do anything creative, right? 
So that's the beauty of the artist's way is that there are super simple exercises that are suggested. And what the daily one I mentioned is just uh, the called the brain drain or the brain dump. She calls it some, some people call it that because it's about just getting all the gunk out of the way. And then you'll mm -hmm. find that things will just start popping for you that are really powerful, that are really insightful. So that would be my, oh, I, I love that. Like, yeah, early on in my career, I was doing that. I like, I did several groups with people. I would do it myself. Um, and you know, since then, do you do groups? You know, I haven't been doing any groups. I guess I got a little, I, I suppose I could have done things online, but you know, after with COVID, I was doing groups yes. at my studio and then yes. uh, it was similar to that. It was like, I, I would kind of combine journeying with, uh, with doing, in fact, another thing I think is really great for people to explore is collaging and, mm -hmm. um, I got into doing soul collage, it's called many years ago too, which I love. And the, the, the intention behind soul collage is to eventually have a collection of cards, like almost like you're creating your own deck of cards, like a tarot deck. And of course it doesn't have to have anything to do with tarot, but you're creating these cards, a series of cards, but just the process itself. And what's beautiful about soul collage, that's something um, really fun to look into is that it's so it's not intimidating at all because you know a soul collage card might be this big you know it's not like you sit someone down and say oh my god now here's a, here's a big poster board now create a collage and then they're like oh my god i don't know what to do or i don't know where to start a soul collage card is literally you could create one and i've done this you can do it with groups there are people mm -hmm. all over the country that that facilitate those you can do it with groups and or um or in or by yourself and you're just creating these very simple cards and then the beauty of course of working with somebody one-on-one -on -one or in a group and breaking that down is then you've got someone to reflect back to you what they see in your card which is always interesting because you know how we always will see something different than what the person has created absolutely you know, we see, we see other dimensions other perspectives because we're not the one who created it so, um, yeah, but I love that suggestion. In fact, that is something that recently someone suggested to me that uh, I was working with a mediumship mentor myself. And she said, mm -hmm. I think you should be doing, um, you know, like a, a creative process where maybe that's a reading for somebody, you know, like create your own. And uh, so mm. what you're saying, like with groups, I see that that could be a way to do that, which I would love to do. So <laughs> thank you for <laughs> triggering I love, that. yeah, no, I, I just, it's, I just feel like you have such, um, mm. just so many skills, talents, and, mm. and there, there, there's just so many possibilities. And, and I know like one-on-one -on -one work mm -hmm. is, is great, but you could really make a huge difference um, yeah. as a course leader, <laughs> I'm not trying to give you ideas, but like, <laughs> no, we're going to be, um, I guess they're on the, the shift network coming up for their ancestral healing summit in January. And, um, that's something I've talked with the host about too, is, you know, doing some kind of a class or pro a program after that would weave, yeah, ancestral healing into something with creativity or any of these other tools. Yes. You know, I know that's in the future for me. Yeah. So I, I know that will unfold. I feel it. Of, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of in the. Yeah. Right <laughs> we both feel it. It's in the future for you. <laughs> yes. The pot is being stirred right now. So, um, yes. yeah, thanks for that forward. Yeah. I will keep you posted if I come up with something. <laughs> Yeah, let let us know and also let us know um, when um, I'd love to post when you're going to be on the summit. Yes. Um, the, if you have the date and time, it would be yeah. great. I don't and, know. And hopefully when we could coordinate. Right. Yeah. I do know that the time frame oh, okay. for the summit is um, 
I think it starts the very end of January, the last week in January, one of the last few days, and then it goes actually into February, like one or two days. So that's the time frame. And right now is the time that they're recording everybody's interviews. So my okay. interview is not coming up until I think the first week in January, and then it'll be, you oh. know, in production, post-production, and then um, it'll be aired. And I, I have that on my website. So just Desiree um, is my website address. And I, um, I've got that actually on the top of the homepage that I'm just keeping people posted on, you know, when my uh, interview will be aired. Um, and I do, like I said, the dates are right there. And I, I think you can register for it. it's free. It's just, a, it's like this. It's a free summit. Um, it's online. Do you have a link we could also post? Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to, cause I, I just think it would be great for our listeners who are interested. Um, oh, yeah, and I'll I, try and make sure that this episode definitely goes, um, you're motivating me. I'm like, Oh, well, this is definitely yeah, coming in out January. in January. Yeah. yeah. It out January before. Uh, because yeah, and I believe you can just go to the shiftnetwork.com and, okay. and then you will just plug in. I'm just, I think what they do is they have, you know, all their events listed. You would go under events and, um, and I can, I'm, I think I have that. Actually, I have that link on my website. Good. And you okay, can just okay. go and you can register. It's easy. You just, you know, you sign up for free and it's, um, you know, and then they start sending you notices of what's coming up and then closer to the actual event. They'll send out um, a calendar that shows who's speaking on what day. So each day, I believe it's like five. I want to say it's <clears throat> five days, four or five days, and there's five or six people per day. So it's a really broad spectrum. And even though it's uh, the Ancestral Healing uh, Summit, uh, I think what you will find is... <laughs> again, just like people, there's such a broad spectrum of how people approach ancestral healing. I mean, of course, mine, yes. I'm the bones, reading the bones and the shamanic journey of that. <clears throat> but there's, I mean, there are people who are scientists that will be on. There are people who are therapists. There are people who other, there's other shamans. I mean, everybody has a different approach or practice where they suggest mm -hmm. different ways that you can can work on your on healing your ancestral lineage so uh it's it's just it's incredibly creative too how <laughs> how many ways they are i think this is something that you and i just kind of said at the beginning is like when you said oh you do all these different uh, modalities but <clears throat> the truth is i think all these modalities we're all kind of leading it's all leading us to the same thing. And ultimately mm. I think people, whether it's uh, hypnosis, shamanism, creating art, or just creativity itself, <coughs> excuse me, is basically we're all wanting to come to this place of wholeness, right? Or mm. <coughs> feeling, feeling love ultimately, right? Like really feeling self-love. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's truly what any of these paths are. That's why we're doing any of these kinds of um, modalities or this type of work is to really, once we feel whole and healed within ourselves, mm. everything else just kind of falls into place, right? Or that is reflected <clears throat> out in our world in a beautiful, loving way. And sometimes in magical ways, right? That we can't even yes. conceive of, right? When we're just kind of stuck in our mind about what that's supposed to look like. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I loved it. That, well, just such wonderful, like just strong, strong knowledge base skills. And, and I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm excited to, um, I'll definitely be attending the Ancestral Healing Summit. And, um, and then we'll make sure that um, we, your, the guests have your website, as well mm -hmm. as um, access to the, you know, they can access the, uh, the link um, yeah. to the summit as well and, and register to um, yeah. so that they can, and it's free, it's free. <laughs> they can get a taste of you and 
Yeah, you don't have to feel like, yes. oh gosh, I've been doing this forever. I know what it's about. It's a total learning experience and you can pick and choose yes. <clears throat> which ones you want to watch and listen to. And they're, um, they are recorded and then they're replayed, I believe, for let's say maybe two days after each one. So you can mm -hmm. actually, if you miss one, you can go back and listen. So it's, you know, it's really easy to participate and exp you know, explore. It's really easy to explore. <clears throat> wow. Well, well, you know, we would love to thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest yes. um, on the show and um, really excited for things for you that are coming. I'm, 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 I'm for that course on the Shift Network <laughs> or, or any other network. <laughs> um. And, uh, or if I start a group up, I will definitely share that with you. Yes. Maybe we can get together another time and we can talk more about that when I, um, when it's more concrete, whatever I <clears throat> come up with creating. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Such a pleasure to be here with you. Hey, friends. So it's time for our next segment, time for our soul power statement for the week. And it is, what if I embraced the grand creator that is me? Yes. You know, and, and, and as you do this, I invite you to take in um, this quote by, by D. Hawk, who said, make an empty space in any corner of your mind and creativity will instantly fill it. Take time, friends. Take time to pause in your life, to sit, to be, and you will find that creative inspiration comes to you willingly. And we have come to the end of our show. We'd love to hear from you. So please comment below, subscribe to our podcast, write a review, write a review, <laughs> write a review, and let us know how we're doing. If you're interested in your own medical intuitive reading or healing on being on the podcast, send us a message at soulingyou.com. And, you know, finally, if no one has told you this today, I will thank you for being authentically you. The soul in me honors the soul in you. Disclaimer, this podcast is for spiritual and or entertainment purposes and is not a substitute for medical diagnosis healthcare treatment, or professional advice. Each person is so unique. So please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions.